What are the types of auto scaling in the market? Suppose you have a M3 dot medium instant size and you have a EBS that's a root volume of 40 GB size to that. Now if you want to increase the capacity because your load is increasing, one way is from M3 dot medium you change the size to M3 dot large. To change the size you have to stop the instance and then change the size provided this is an EBS back instance. Yes, if you want to change the size from 40 GB to 80 GB, you can also do that. We did that in the EBS demo. You take a snapshot, you create a new volume of 80 GB, attach as a root volume. But changing the instance size or changing the volume size, in these two cases, it would require instance to be stopped temporarily and then the size would be changed. But that is possible. If you can do it in a off-peak covers or something, you can back up. It's a possible thing. In another case, you want to change size from M3 dot medium to M3 dot extra large again by stopping server. Yeah, if you don't want to remove the original size of the EBS volume, you can attach additional EBS volumes also. You can rate them and then you can make them as a one EBS volume. All these cases are case for the vertical scaling. In the vertical scaling, you add resource vertically to the your current infrastructure. Whether you add memory, you add compute power, whether you add storage, all the cases are of the vertical scaling. Vertical scaling has some kind of a limitation because one limitation we just saw, it may require the instance to be brought down. In some cases, it's a, there is a threshold. Beyond that, if you keep on adding more resources, it may not improve the performance because eventually it's a single machine. A single machine has its own limitations which might not work beyond certain capacity. So when you think about M3 dot extra large, M3 dot large, in both the cases, this is how the it's going to work. Let's think over the other another option that is known as a horizontal scaling. The horizontal scaling case, you add more resources horizontally to your fleet. So you have one M3 dot medium, you add one another M3 dot medium, you add another M3 dot medium, all three are managed by the elastic load balancer. So suppose you have a 10 requests coming up. Now even if you have a 300 requests coming, it would be evenly distributed among each machine with the 100 requests. So that's the horizontal scaling for you. Amazon Auto Scaling helps you achieve horizontal scaling. It adds more resources horizontal to your fleet. And you can also make them part of the ELB automatically which allows you to scale horizontally. And believe me, the horizontal is the go-to thing for you. Because if you want to add more and more from 5 to 10 to 15 resources, that's a possible. Plus, it does not need any downtime. And it doesn't need or it won't have any capacity threshold like a vertical scaling. You keep on adding, it would work perfectly for you. Auto scaling helps you achieve horizontal scalability for your applications. It's a perfect case for the high availability. It can scale up and scale down EC2 capacity automatically based on the conditions defined. You can manage your desired capacity. Now, what is that? When you make an auto scaling case, it would have a three kind of a parameters: minimum size required maximum size required and desired capacity. Minimum means it would never go below those many numbers. So suppose at any moment you think I need two EC2 instance running. So at auto scaling level you define that I need two as a minimum. Now due to any conditions it would keep adding more resources because there is a load increase something. What happens if there is a DDoS attack and it keeps adding more and more resource? You don't want to do that or there is a known case because you know there is a virus scan going on. It's not a real increase in the load but my CPU is behaving oddly. What you can do is you can set up the maximum limit also. You can say my maximum limit is 8. So when the load increases it keeps adding more and more resources. So from 2 to 3 to 4 to 5 
it would not go beyond 8. It would stop at 8. So this way you can control. And at any moment, how many instants you want, that is defined by the desired capacity. We would see in the demo how can you scale up, scale down, how can you define the minimum size, maximum size and the desired capacity. But it's important to understand these are the three parameters, minimum size, maximum size and the desired capacity. And with this, you can see you can increase or decrease capacity seamlessly. Now that's why this is the perfect case of the cost optimization. You would say how would it optimize my cost? Imagine if you have a five instances. Now, for these five instances, you might have to, you don't want the five instances running all the time. You say, at any time, keep two running. Whenever required, load increase, add one, two, three more instances over there. If you were in your own data center, you might have a procured capacity as per five instances and it would running. Here, you are running only two instances. As and when load increases, you add more resources. As and when load decreases, you remove the resources. And beauty of Amazon is you pay for only what you have used. So you would be paying for those two, three instances only when they are available or only when they are being used. In that case, you would be paying for those additional two to three instances for some few hours only. That's why it's a huge cost optimization for you too. Auto scaling helps you to achieve the best of the high availability because it does keep check of the health of the instance and even if it finds any of the instance unhealthy, it would terminate that and launch a new instance for you. We will read a little bit more about that in the future. Also, if you think it helps you since it's a scalability, so if a one zone goes down, so that instance stops from behaving, it would automatically scale up because the CPU load increase something like that and it would help you achieve high availability and disaster recovery too. Auto scaling is ideal for hourly, daily, weekly variability. If you have a load something which is in a spike something like this that's not the case. The reason is by the time it spikes up you are about to spin up a new instance it has spiked down it has come down and it's about to be terminated. Then again it spiked up, it is about to be launched. So you have to find a pattern and baseline something and then only you should be setting up the auto scaling formulas or events to come across. It works with the ELB and the CloudWatch perfectly. And the most important, it does not cost you extra. It's a free of the cost service.